Well, God is good. We have been teaching a series, and I've had so much fun teaching this with uh, Debbie. It's not often that we teach together, but uh, I sure enjoy it when we do. We're teaching a series uh, on Miles Monroe's book, The Power and the Principle of Vision. And uh, it's a fantastic book. You've simply got to get it. Uh, but we don't have it in our bookstore anymore. we got to order some more. But the good news for you is that we're going to tell you everything that's in it anyways. And so you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. We're going to give you all the good stuff right out of it. Um, we've, we, this, I think this is uh, week four or so. And uh, tonight's title is called Discovering Your Vision. It's, the whole title is The Principles and the power of vision and discovering your vision. We're going to talk about the steps of discovery of the vision. You know, it uh, tells us in uh, Proverbs 29, 18, without a vision, the people perish. Amen. Your hopes, your dreams, your desires mm. perish. You need a vision. You need a vision for your life. But not any vision. Not vision that's been handed down by your mom or your dad or your gram grandma or Aunt Mabel or anybody else. You need your God-given vision in life. Amen. You need Amen. to know your purpose. You need Amen. to know why you're on planet Earth. The greatest day of your life is when you discover why you are on planet Earth. I mean, what you're really supposed to do with your life. Not just what you're doing or what is good enough to be doing, but really what you're supposed to be doing, what God has inspired in your heart. Well, you say, Pastor Jamie, how, how am I ever going to discover that? Well, it's not surprising that your God-given vision can only by, be given by God. Amen. Amen. I can't give it to you. Wish I could. I'd line you all up and tell you, tell you what you need to know. But it's got to come from God. Maybe I can confirm it with a word of wisdom or word of knowledge. Or, or other people can confirm or bear witness to it. But no one else can give it to you. It's got to come from God. Now, how does it come from God? Well, it comes through a, a process. But let me just sum it down in, into this. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared, your Amen. vision, your plan, your purpose, the things that God has prepared for you, for those who love Him, but the Spirit... The Hallelujah. Spirit, I'm in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. The Spirit has revealed them to you, for the Spirit searches the deep things, yea, the deep things of God. How do you know God's plan for your life? The Holy Ghost tells you. Yes. And last week we talked about, I'm kind of rambling on the review. Sorry, Deb. That's good. But, good but stuff. Last, last week we talked about the importance of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit, the operation of the Spirit in your life. You know, the, the vision of this church, if we we're going to put it in a line, is to help you find and fulfill your God given purpose in life. Yeah. That's, that's the vision of Grandview Church, to help you find and fulfill your God given purpose in, in life. Well, it's not surprising then that, that one of our distinctives as a church is to be a Pentecostal, Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled church. That's why when we have our times of prayer, our times of worship, our times of pray, uh, praise since day one, we've always had a, uh, an experience in the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit operate. Worship in the Spirit operates. Why? Because in those times when the gifts of the Spirit and the operation of the Spirit is active in the congregation of the church, that's when God begins to reveal things to you Amen. by His Spirit. You Amen. see, it, it's not just all show. It's not just all pointless. It is God speaking into your life what you need to know Hallelujah. to fulfill His purpose Amen. in your life. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense to you? I hope you understand that. That's why I, I think that's why the New Testament church is the Spirit-filled church. Amen. But another, to me, another thing about why do we, when we come in here, that we take time to sing in the Spirit, that we take time to wait on the Holy Spirit. This is not in our notes for tonight, so the Holy Ghost is in charge. Amen. But the reason that we do that, do you know you will grow in your gifts and your callings by association? Yes. Who you associate with. Say it again. That's true. You will grow in your gifts, your callings, your anointings, your potential. Potential is, is what God has planned, but you haven't realized it yet. 
but you can grow in that by your associations or you can die in it by your associations. Mm -hmm. That is big. Yes. So when you're coming into the house and we take that time, precious time, to, to get beyond this realm and to get into the, the heavenly realm with God, the reason uh, other than, yes, God is visiting us, but the other reason is because it causes you to grow in the things of the Spirit. Yes. Too much of the church, we say, well, you know, you do that at home. Don't do it in the sanctuary. You, you worship in the Spirit at home. But I know from experience that if we leave it to home, for the most part, we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Why? Because the enemy wants to shut that down. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to shut down your, your callings and your purpose and your vision. Mm -hmm. He is looking for every opportunity to, to stop it, to take the excitement out of you. But if you have time and you will be deliberate to cultivate mm -hmm develop mm -hmm. what is in that spirit man i'm going to tell you nobody will be able to shut your vision down that's right amen you know um the operation of the spirit has made such a difference in my life that uh, i was raised in church a uh, very liberal church i was in every church meeting you could possibly be in every activity you could possibly be in i had great friends in my church experience but you know when we graduated high school and everybody went their separate ways some to work some to college here and there and everywhere once my friends were gone my purpose in church was gone and in my college years, I went to church at Christmas, I went to church at Easter, but I did not make that church my home, my house of worship. Why? Because it lost significance for me. Right. I still believed in Jesus, I still uh, loved the things of God, but it, it lost it. But then I met, I met and married a Pentecostal girl, and then I was raised up... Fault. I was raised up in my spiritual life under the anointing of an awesome Pentecostal preacher sitting right there. And you know what? If y'all walked out on me tonight, I would not be moved in my spirit. I would still worship God, love God, live for God. I, you know, and so I got fixed in my spiritual right. life when I got full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Anybody Amen. have that experience? Okay, praise the Lord. Talking to the right crew. Well, listen, in, in, we got to quickly, Deb, we got to do this tonight. Let's. Hey, it's not my fault. <laughs> I know. It's not. I know. But I'm. I'm we, we just have a lot of fun up here. But we, we got to talk about other. discovering your vision. Hallelujah. And um, let's talk about the steps of discovery. Steps of discovery. Uh, let's just go, to, go through them. One, two, three, four, five. Does that sound good to you? Sure. Okay. Uh, steps of discovery. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. Here, here's the first one. Number one, eliminate distractions. You, Amen. You need time to discover God's plan. You need what we call creative time. Mm -hmm. You need time to be able to think creatively. Yes. And uh, it, you've got to get away from the phone, get away from the television, get away from the distraction. Do you know statistically that 70% of your day is spent with distractions? Just people interrupting you. Phone rings, what, somebody knocks on the door, something or other. Something. But listen, you need quiet time. But I don't just call it quiet time because you tend to fall asleep in quiet time. I call it creative time. You need time when you can think. Think creatively. Amen. Yeah, I mean, think big. Believe big. Think abundantly above all. You know, you, you need that time to be creative. So number one, you have to eliminate distractions. I've heard of ministers who, who take time at the beginning of every year and they go off to some place, a retreat of some place, and they just get hold of the mind of God. Well, I think that's fantastic. But listen, you've got to be careful that you're not going to some place that's, that's so uh, interesting to you that that becomes the distraction. You know, I, I would recommend you stay, you stay in what's familiar so you're not distracted by your environment, but just, just make sure that uh, you have time to yourself. Amen. Okay? Amen. I love what Proverbs uh, 29 verse 18 says in, in the message. And, and you know it from the 
uh, King James, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, this is what it says out of the message. If people cannot see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. True? Mm -hmm. If you that don't know that what God has for you to yes. do, you will, you will dab in this a little bit, you'll dab in that a little bit, and you're, you're, you step away from it and say, wait a minute, who am I? Mm -hmm. and, and so we can have our hands in many things, but not be a master at anything. Yes. God wants us to be a master at what he called us to. Yes. And if he's going to hold us accountable when we stand before him, and he is of what he has put in our hearts. He is going to reveal it to us, number one, if we get quiet enough to hear. Amen. Or number two, you got to find your true self. you got to be true to you. And then you got to realize who you are connected to. Yes. And on top of that, you got to realize who put the dream, who put the vision inside of you. We are talking about God Almighty. We're not talking about Uncle uh, Joe, Aunt Sally, Mom or Dad, but we're talking the one who formed you, created you. He made you perfect, mm -hmm. perfect and complete. We are complete in him. He made you perfect for what he put in your heart. Mm -hmm. So I've got to ask myself, who am I? Who did God make me? Who am I in Christ? And I love what uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28 says, and you may want to turn to it in your Bible. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I already think he made us pretty awesome just by reading that. Amen. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. You were created in the image and the likeness of God. Amen? You were created in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he, him, he them. And verse 28, and God blessed them. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. And God said unto them, be busy about what I've put in your heart. Amen. This is what he said. Be fruitful and multiply. I'm so glad God's in the business of multiplication. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, over the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So what is he saying? You got to know what God put in you because you are unique. You are a masterpiece. You are one of a kind and you are well equipped. I love what Philippians says uh, that I can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens That's me. It. That's it. So I've got to pull into down deep into the spirit mm -hmm. of who I am. Mm -hmm. Once you get your image right, the image that you're, you know, God says, uh, let's make him in our image. And then he blessed him. He told him what to do, have dominion, yeah. be fruitful. Once you get your image image right, then you can get your vision right. And that's why we start out every me meeting by saying, uh, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do because that's who I am in Christ Jesus. That book tells me who I am in Christ Jesus. It gets me into possibility thinking. It gets me into Amen. the thinking of, yes, I can. Where if I don't have my image right, if I don't see myself created in the image of God, then I begin to think, no, I can't do that. I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have the wisdom to do that. I don't have the strength to do that. But once you get your image right, once you know who you are in yes. Christ, then all things are possible. Hallelujah. I can do all things Amen. through Christ who Amen. strengtheneth me. Amen. Now, here's, here's another little hint. When you're finding your true self, you begin writing down your ideas. And there's really a brain-based uh, uh, revelation to that. It unlocks things in your brain. When you start to write it down, your brain begins to work in a way that it doesn't when you're just verbalizing something. That's why if, if you uh, looked at my desk at home, I've got little pieces of paper, uh, little stuff written on down because I don't want to miss a thought. Have you ever had a great thought and thought, I will never forget this? 
And then, you know, 15 minutes later, I, I'm Wait, asking so Debbie, Debbie, did that? I what tell you that? amazing revelation? Right? Please. But listen, you got to write it down or take more ginkgo caloba or something, but, <laughs> but write it down. Write down your thoughts. And then you got to dream big, man. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, really, you got to dream big and yes. ask yourself, what do I really want to do with my life? Mm-hmm. What do I, you know, I, I, if we would survey this room, I think we would be amazed at what you would say if we said, take the limits off. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what somebody thinks you can do. So much, uh, there is so much uh, equipping on the inside of us and ability if we'll just let ourselves dream. It's too often we are basing our future based on what happened yesterday. But if we'll just allow ourselves to get quiet, hear what God is saying, and, and say, okay, what do I really, really, really want to do with my life? What would I do even if I wasn't being paid for it? I would want to do that. Mm-hmm. And not only would I want to do it, but I would want to do it very well. Mm-hmm. Something uh, Bishop Tony Miller said, he wanted to hire someone onto his church, on his staff. And the gentleman he wanted to hire, you know, in the world would make a lot of money. And he didn't have that. And I think he was talking to Pastor Peters. And, uh, and so he asked him, he said, what do I do? I want to bring this gentleman on. He's got all the gifts And he could take us to where we want to go. But finances aren't there to make that happen. This is what he said. He said, a champion is looking for one thing. A champion is looking for an opportunity. If you will bring the champion on, you give them an opportunity, that champion will be able to make the resources happen. I say to all of you, you are a champion in God. Yes. Amen. Would you just yes. say that to yourself? Yes. I am a champion. I am a champion. Standing at the door. Standing at the door. Of opportunity. Of opportunity. All I need to do. All I need to do. Is step through it. Step through Amen. it. Amen. You know, one of the, uh, one of the ways that you be- can begin to unlock your vision and find your purpose is uh, if you were to ask yourself... A uh, hundred years from now, once I'm in glory, once I'm gone from, the, from this planet, if the Lord should tarry, a hundred years, two hundred years from now, what is the legacy that I want to leave? What do I want people to remember about me? And that usually is the key to what you're really motivated to do in life, what God's purpose for you is in life. And so if you were to write your own legacy... And say, you know, a hundred years from now, I want people to remember me this way. I want them, when they think of me, when my name comes up, I want them to think about this regarding my name. And usually in there somewhere is your God-given purpose for life. Because that's what's so important to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, to have that, that as your very last statement of what you have accomplished how you want people to know you. And, and I think a lot of it, a lot of times, is not knowing by what we did, but who we were. Yes. The Bible says a faithful man mm. will abound with blessings. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I would want to just be called faithful and mm-hmm. one that knew him. Yeah. Very good. I would love to have, I was faithful yeah. and I was one that knew him in a way yeah. that I could present him to somebody else in need. Amen. Amen. And then you got to just take time to write out your mission statement. And that shouldn't be a hard thing, but really, what is your mission in life? And we have it here. Mm-hmm. You know, we tell you all the time, one of our greatest missions or purpose is to help people discover And fulfill their God-given purpose. But you will never know it until you write it down. When you said that earlier, something happens when you begin to write it down. That is really true. Mm -hmm. Because you can go back and you can look a month from now, two months from now, a year from now. And you've got it right there. What was in your heart. And, And the Holy Ghost can use that to say, but you wrote that on what is today. Today is May 29th. 2013, that you could go back to your journal or your Bible. Your Bible's a wonderful place to put it. Go to your Bible, and you can see, and the Holy Spirit can say, six months ago, this is what you wrote. 
what steps have you made to, towards that? Mm -hmm. it, it, it helps us to stay on track when you write it down. Mm -hmm. the, one of the keys, I think this is step four if you're taking notes, is I have no idea what step this is. Five. <laughs> step five. No, I'm going with four. How many of y'all believe it's four? Do I hear five and a five and a five, six, 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 six five and a five? Okay, we're going with four. Um, in, in your vision, what, what is the motivation behind your vision? And, and yes. your motivation must include kingdom principles of helping others. If you feel like your vision is to be a great surgeon or a great architect or a great soldier or a great whatever it might be, uh, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, doesn't make any difference. But in that, the motivation must have a kingdom element to it. That in my, the reason God has called me to this is because I'm going to be able to apply it to build up the kingdom of God. Yes. And it can't be outside the kingdom of God. It has to be within the kingdom of God. And somehow it works out that, that uh, what, what you're doing, if it's really your God-given purpose, will somehow spill over into blessing the kingdom and blessing other people around you. You all understand what I'm saying? Amen. Okay. Amen. And then number five. I'll go with that. Step number five, identify your principles. And what are your core values? You've got to uh, realize that you can have a gift and you can have a talent and you can have a vision, but what are the core values, the non-negotiables? That's what we say in this house, the non-negotiables. I remember when I was uh, singing in schools and stuff and, and years ago, people talked to me about recording a secular CD, you know, and, and I did record one that was gospel, but a, a secular CD. And I said, you know what my core value is? This gift, our anointings belong to God and they're for God and for his kingdom. So for me, my core value would be that I would use my gift in the house of God. Amen. So you've got to look at your own vision and say, okay, what are my core values? core principles by which you will live and they will be incorporated into the blueprint for your life. So, you know, there's many ways to do maybe what you've got in your heart, uh, uh, George, with your gift and in, in calling. But you're, you know that yours is for the church. And so you got to look at and say, what are the non-negotiables? What's the, my core values that my vision has got to fall into place yeah, with? Because you can achieve a vision uh, but you won't keep your vision without character. That's the vision truth. Vision requires virtue. That's true. Y and if you're going to do it right, you can't do your vision without virtue. Step six, choose your goals and objectives. Step seven, identify your resources. But I want to close tonight on step eight, which is simply to commit to your vision. Amen. You have to commit to your vision. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The NIV version says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will, be, your plans will succeed. You have got to uh, jump into the deep end of the pool. You've got to commit yourself and say, you know, if this is the reason why God put me on earth, is this, if this is what I'm supposed to be doing, then I am all in. Amen. I'm going to make a quality decision from which I will not turn. I am stepping over the line. I will not back up again. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be uh, little shifts along the way and changes along the way. You know, Debbie and I have been in ministry, seems like forever, and, and there's been kind of a, it's been a winding road at time, you know, as we've been capitalizing on certain parts of ministry and then other parts of ministry, and here we are in a pulpit ministry again. And so I'm not saying that things won't shift, but I'm saying that once you discover what God has called you to do, you commit to that, and you say, you know what? I'm all in on this thing. That's right. I'm not backing up. I'm not denying. I'm not... Listen, you know why you have to commit? Because there's a thousand reasons every day to quit. Yes. There's, there's high waves. 
There's windy. There, I mean, there's all sorts of things that there's going to be a thousand reasons speaking in your ears saying, you know what? It's not worth it. It's too hard. It takes too much time, too much energy, too much money. Quit. Stop. Don't try so hard. Back up. But there's no plan B. No plan B. No plan B. I'm all in. I'm all in. Are you all all in? Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, God, God has purpose in your life. God has you on planet earth for a reason. God has you in this church for a reason. God has you in your various places in life for a reason. And it's all unfolding. And it, there's just wonderful revelation yet to come. I say, you know what? You need to spend Quality time and effort discovering exactly what God has designed you to do. And once you've discovered that, then you start walking it out. And man, what a great journey that is. Amen. Will you stand with me tonight? Praise the Lord.